Hey, what's up, folks? This is Timmy from Anchorage, Alaska. I'm here today to tell you about the Kimberly stove and show you how to start it. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is get her going. So, what you do, open up your door. And what I usually like to use are um, these little fire starter pieces. Um, they're super generic. Get them, any, get them in any store, basically, grocery store. And then I just like to split little pieces of kindling up. It's nice dry kindling. And I'll just kind of stack it in the stove like so. Just stack it against the back, not against the window. And once you get your stack going, I like to make my fires happen nice and quick. So I get a little butane torch, give her a little crank. And I like that pump you up. Usually when I do this, I try to keep the door closed a little bit. I'll leave this thing on for maybe 15 seconds, get her good and smoking. When I do that, go ahead and shut the door. And this stove, the air intake on it is pretty awesome. Um, even after a fire's just started, you can basically shut the door and it stays going. You don't have to keep it cracked like every other wood stove. And now that we have her running, um, usually I'll let this burn about five minutes or so. And then I'll take uh, larger logs at that point and throw them in there. And usually for larger wood, um, if you can come across this thing called a press to log, it's basically a compressed extruded fire dust or fire dust or a sawdust basically. So um, yeah, it's just extremely compressed sawdust, a 10,000 pound machine crushes it together so there's no wax or nasty chemicals holding it together. Um, this is awesome stuff to burn if you have it locally. Um, you can find it in hardware stores, other such places. And usually what you do is you cut it into smaller pieces like this, little disc. And you just throw maybe three or four of those discs in there, and it'll literally burn four hours in four of those discs. So you get about eight discs out of this uh, entire press two log. So that's eight hours of fire right there out of a log. Pretty awesome. But as you can see, she is cranking right now um, just from that one burn. Um, the reason this happens, uh, this stove has a special air induction, a secondary combustion going on. So um, basically the fire is burning down here, and there's other oxygen tubes that run up the stove and create a second fire up here. And it's basically like a, it looks like a steel honeycomb. And that little steel honeycomb just recirculates air, and oxygen around and just ignite the gases on fire from the wood down here. So it's pretty cool. Um, you'll get to see that in a minute. But um, this Kimberly stove is definitely the most efficient wood stove I've used. Um, I've used wood stoves in cabins, hunting camps, friends homes, pretty much all over the place. And, uh, They've never lasted for more than three hours or so, and you have to restoke them. This guy, um, you get her stoked, and it'll literally go for six hours to eight hours um, just on one stoke. So it's pretty awesome. You can actually get a good night's sleep. Um, it's only 25 and a half inches tall by 10 and a half inches wide. So it fits in an extremely small space, such as this tiny motorhome. It's a 19 foot long motorhome. Um, the clearances, uh, once it gets cranking, you can put your hand right there, inch away and barely feel the heat around the sides. But this window, once this gets cranking, you have your foot, uh, hand about a foot back and you can just feel the heat cranking out of it. Like almost burn your hand having it out there. And the same with the top. You can't get your hand more than maybe a foot from the top without it getting really hot. So it puts about a thousand degrees out of the top, much hotter than other wood stoves. And another unique feature is the three inch chimney flue pipe. Um, most wood stoves require a uh, six inch chimney flue pipe application, which is pretty expensive, runs about 1200 bucks. Uh, this flue pipe and all the materials to install the stove, including the granite and even the trim, um, only ran me 300 bucks, so super cheap for installation parts. Um, what I did, I just ran the flue right up through my cabinet and right out the roof. And as you can see, um, if this double wall pellet vent pipe is pretty protective. I actually keep things up here and doesn't burn them at all. So and all my foods up there. Um, what else can I tell you about it? Uh, the cooking feature, um, it's got a 10 inch diameter cooktop, which is actually much larger than any range top. So you can easily put a wok up there if you want to cook up some stir fry. Um, I showed you how to clean it. Let's get this ash pan right here. Just pull it out when you're ready. Uh, when your fire goes out, you just dust all the ash down through the uh, bottom and it falls into the sash pan. Dump your ash pan out, put her back in. 
and it uh, actually has really little ash usually. Um, it's a pretty efficient stove, so it burns. It actually uses all the fuel. It doesn't just turn in ash. Uh, what else can we tell you about it? It's pretty light. It's uh, 56 pounds, so it doesn't weigh the RV down. Most small stoves are anywhere from 100 to 200 pounds, so uh, it's kind of nice having a lightweight stove. And that's pretty much it. Um, pretty soon I'm going to show you the, uh, the secondary combustion that the stove has. Pretty cool. We can actually try it right now. We'll see what happens. What's up, guys? Going to show you some Kimberly Flames. Let's see what we can get going here. We'll just mess with the draft controls. Here we go. All the way open. And it's a ripping fire. We'll do half throttle. Pretty cool fire. Still kind of ripping. Down a little bit more, and things start getting really cool. Look, you can see that secondary combustion up top. It's really going off. Pretty cool looking flames coming out of the front. We're going to cut her back a little bit. She's about one quarter throttle right now. Cool stuff going on. Just kind of dancing around. Let's cut her down a little bit more.